Hi, it's me, Hannah. I've been getting a lot of requests to teach classes, so here I am. Bear with me, it's my first time. Not really. I did a class before, I think, on skirts, but I don't know where you're gonna find that right now, but that was a long time ago. So here I am teaching you how to sew a rope ball. So we're gonna do something like this shape, probably just this height. This one, I was trying to finish the bobbins in my bobbin stash, I guess you would call it. So that's why there's all these different colors, but I like how it came out. Even the bottom is a different color. And we will be sewing uh, with a different color thread today so that you can see um, the process. Yeah, so let me show you some of what I've made over, I would say, the last year. So I started off doing just your basic neutral um, ones. This is was my first ever because I wanted the strips of color in there. Those strips are just cotton fabric cut at one inch on the diagonal. So cut on the bias. One inch strips, however long or short you like it, and it's wrapped around the rope as you sew it. Then I started playing around with different thread colors. So the blue thread, the pink thread, you can use stuff for a baby shower, I guess. You can put, you know, the little onesies in here. Uh, teddy bear, wrap it in some cellophane, and you can you can do it, you know, with whatever color thread you want. I had pink and blue for babies. Like I say, any color thread you want. So that's the ones that I started playing around with after doing the neutral ones. Then I started playing around with different stitches. So your decorative stitches on your machine. I did that. This one, I really, really, really like. Um, I did this one, this stitch, in a big basket, and it sold in less than an hour <laughs> from the store. By the way, I'm in my shop. I'll probably have to pause if someone comes in, but here's what I create now. Then I started, oh, there's another one. There's another one with different rope color. Uh, that's that. You can put it in the middle there. There's so much possibility. Then I started dyeing the rope. So I dyed the rope and then attached it to the bowl I was making. This one, I made the complete bowl and then dyed it. Uh, so that's how this one, this one, I was going for like an ombre effect. So this one is just, it sits in the dye that way for a bit and then I just gave it like a rinse. That's how I got this. That, it wasn't the way that I planned to do it, but that's how I ended up doing it. Then I had some beads in my stash, so I decided to try that. You could probably use this as a jewelry tray on your dresser. There's another one with, you know, two different color ropes. I started using jute. There's that one, there's this one. This one I use in the store to hold scarves right now. But I really, really like jute rope. I love the look of it. This is also jute. So this is when I started playing around with two color ropes to make a basket. Uh, combine them and then zigzag together. So this is jute and your natural rope. And this one is black rope with the natural rope. And then I decided to make a bag. So this, I can't wait for summer. This is jute again, and then just black cotton rope. And this, this is a bag that I plan to use once the weather gets better next year, summer maybe. It's a handbag. I absolutely love it. Again, I did not plan this. I just kept going around and around and around in circles and it got bigger and bigger. And then I was like, ooh, I have some wooden handles at home. I saw a lady in the sewing group use her wooden handles and that's how I came up with this idea. So that's the bag. Rope. There is so many different types of rope out there. My preference is the braided cotton. I think it stands up nicer when 
you make your project. These are braided cotton as well. These are the ones I got off Amazon. So that's this. Let me show you the package. This is what I got off Amazon. There's 200 feet of rope in here. It's called clothesline rope. So it says it's 100% cotton, but in the middle, it has a polyester core. So keep that in mind. But you can still dye it because that's what I did here with that. So I find this nice for making the little bolts. I think it's just under five millimeters. So that's what I like for the little bolts. For the bigger stuff, I like the six millimeter rope for stuff like this, right? I think it, it just, you get firmer sides. This, as you can see, I buy in bulk. It is natural. I have tried dyeing the rope. This rope, I just tried dyeing this. This is turmeric and I can't wait to put these two together. Oh, don't know what I'm making yet, but I have a vision. So yeah. I tried dyeing that and I love it. I want to try dyeing with avocado and all the other stuff, but time. This is a sash, sash rope, I guess. It's just three strands. Let me see if I can undo it. I need to find the end. It's three strands twisted together. I don't like this one too much. I don't think it's that stable, but I have used it here, the green one, and here. That's why I've used that. If I undo it, let me put it behind that. There's so much color in here. You can see it has like one, two. It has different strands on it. So that's what this one, it's three strands twisted together. And then jute. I love, really love jute. Again, here it is. And it's at the bottom of the bag that I made. I just buy this at the craft store because I can't find anybody that does it in bulk. So, as we've gone through these different types of rope and the possibilities are endless. Like, once you learn the basic way to start a rope bowl, you can just let your imagination run wild. Um, what you would need is rope, of course, a pair of scissors, some pins, piece of tape, and for my labels, my labels come with uh, screw, screws, Chicago screws. So I need a screwdriver. Um, you would also need a strip of leather or full leather. These are full leather. Um, I got them off Etsy. Uh, you can just search fold over full leather labels and you'll find a ton of people that does them. You can get your label customized to your brand and some sellers, it comes with the screws and some sellers, it comes with holes that you can just sew it with thread and that's another option. So I haven't tried that option. I like the look of the Chicago screws. So I just stick with that. So. One more thing I should say, in my opinion, if you're making something like a big basket or like the bag, I would stick with the six millimeter rope and not the thinner, the five millimeter rope, because you're just gonna be going round and round and round and round and round and round forever, trying to get up to the height that you want with a thinner rope. If it's a thicker rope, you'll finish faster. So that's just my little tip. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go, up to, go over to the sewing machine. I'll show you how I set up my machine to start, and then I will show you how to actually start sewing the rope bowl. Okay, now I'm showing you how I set up my machine. We will need a zigzag stitch. So on mine, it's the number two stitch and it is default 3.6 millimeters wide i need it to be 2.6 millimeters wide and we will have to change this as um we go on but just to begin the bowl i need it to be narrow my stitch length which is here i want that to be 0.45 there so 0 0.45 for the length and 2.6 for the width. 
And that's what I need in order to begin my bowl. I use this basket to store my rope when I'm making the bowls because I don't want the rope on the ground. So that's what this basket is used for. Okay, so here's how you start your bowl. I'm gonna use the pins to show you, but I, I usually don't use pins anymore, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. So when you unwrap your rope from your packaging, it's gonna have tape on the end because it's clear tape. It's gonna have tape on the end. What I do is I cut it so that there's only like quarter of an inch tape remaining, like that. And I also pull, you see that dark cord in there? I also pull that out a little bit and I cut some off and then I pull, pull it back so it like, it's down here, the core, but that helps, it makes it easier to start turning and getting it nice and tight in there. So that's my little secret to getting, to starting it. And you just keep rolling. Yeah, I just keep rolling until I get it to a size and then I stick a pin through it so that it stays. You see that? And then I go to the sewing machine and start And sewing. that's why you want your zigzag stitch Tiny. to be, because you're trying to get all of these like sewn together so that they stay in place. You do a stitch this way and you do a stitch that way. So now I'm gonna go to the machine and show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to basically tack the rope together by running the zigzag stitch. I'm gonna do the zigzag stitch to join the starting together. You just take your time and sew because you're going through like, depending on your machine, right? It will, it's like the rope is thick. So just take your time and do, it's basically like a tacking uh, stitch. Remember to pull your pin out because you don't want the needle to hit the pin. Now I also go back. So I just take my time, or if I think it's too bulky, I actually turn it this way <laughs> to do that. But I think it's fine. Okay. Where is my camera? There it is. So do you see that? Now, I'm sewing with different color threads so you can actually see. Another way for you to do this, you can just start going in the zigzag round and round and round. It's totally up to you. If you want to go for a neater look, I would do it that way. I would just start zigzagging from the center and go around and around. It takes a little bit to try and to do it that way to try and start it, it's a lot. You, you like constantly have to be turning, turning, turning because it's so tight. The space is so tight, but it looks neater. So now I'm gonna change my stitch width. Stitch width is going up to six. I have a nine millimeter sewing machine, so I can go up to six millimeter and my length is going to, I would say two. So that's my settings now for the rest of the bowl till the end. What you want, what you have to do is make sure the center of your foot is between this part of the rope and that part of the rope. You have to, in order for the stitches to catch both pieces of rope. You see how I have to keep stopping and turning? That's what I'm talking about when I say the space is tight. When it when your circle starts to get bigger, then it will be easier. But the beginning is always like a little bit tricky. And once you get it going, it's that easy. You're using these fingers to turn and this finger to guide. You don't have to pull anything, it's just guiding. These two ropes as tight as possible together and making sure that it's in the middle of your foot. Now I go with this circle until I get about six inches in diameter. So 
I'm gonna speed this section up so you don't watch me going in circles. Okay, now it's the base is where I want it to be. And the next step is to start building your sides. So to build the sides of your bowl, it's like super easy. You take this and you flip it. That's up. it. And then you continue sewing, zigzag, in circles. So I think my thread is finished, which is actually perfect where it finished. Because now I'm building the sides. I would get a different color. I'm glad it happened. The same thing happened yesterday when I was doing the other bowl and it was pure accident. It turned out really nice <laughs> with the different colors. So it's funny that the same thing happened again. What color should I use? I don't want to use pink. I'll use blue. Okay, and there's another good reason why it's happen while I was filming because then I can show you how I continue. Now if you're using neutral thread it will obviously look neater but because we're using colored thread you can see all the starts and stops. So I just line my um, needle up with one of the stitches and try to get it right in there and then I just continue sewing. If you go back and forth, you can um, have another design on the bowls, but you need to know like exactly where you're gonna do it, right? So that's another option for a design. Every, let's say every three inches, you do a backward forward stitch, it will form a design. It's the key to building your sides is just keeping this up to the side of your machine. I think because of how much bulk there is here to the left of my needle, that dictates the shape of my bowl. I am not 100% sure, but I've noticed I've gotten other shapes of bowls with other machines. So take that into consideration. Just wanted to show you the bowl from the other side. Um, this is how it looks. Under here is the you know, the base that we started off with that was against the side of mach the machine. And now you have your sides all built up. Like I said, I think because of the bulk that I have from there to there, I think that's why it comes, it's at an angle. If you're looking for something with a more straight side, look for a machine that has less bulk, in my opinion. I don't know if I'm correct, but when I use my machine that's smaller, I get a basket with a straighter side as opposed to this machine. So yeah, I'm gonna continue. Um, I'm almost to the end of my row. Here's my colors and I'll show you how to end it off. Okay, so I've done sewing the bowl together. Um, you can see the end here. I just did one or two uh, back stitches. This is my label. You can cut a strip of leather if you have leather, even faux leather. These labels came with something called Chicago screws. So there's one end that looks like this and one end that looks like this. What I do is this end goes through the holes. The label came with your holes. And then I put it between the ropes. Like I don't try to go through the actual rope, the strand itself. So I put that and then you can see it comes out on the other side. And this part again, goes through the hole in the label and then you just line it up. Sometimes it can be a pain because they're little and then you try you screw them together. And you can feel it sometimes when it's not working. Thankfully it's working on this video. So yeah, there it is. This side and this side. So I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope you try rope bowls. Uh, you can use it as decorations around your house. Again, you can try with different stitching, try with different textures, uh, make a summer bag for yourself, uh, a gift for someone. These like go really fast in the store. When I put them out, I put them here on the table. Like these are ones I'm gonna be using for classes and stuff, but um, when I make and I put them out, they go like super fast. People love these. So 
yeah, again, I hope you enjoy this class and I will try to come up with more topics for classes and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.